Hello and welcome. My name's Earl, and we're sitting in the home office of Custom Handrails. And today we're going to do a little shop tour and explain a little bit about what I've been doing for the last so many years. And um, I believe just the name describes what I've been doing, Custom Handrails. I want to tell you how exactly I got started in this and some of the process and some of the changes that have gone over the last number of years. When I first began in this whole endeavor, I looked to some of the old books that were reprinted and published. And to be honest with you, it was a long process. It was very hard to, to hack my way through it. But I had a determination to, um, to figure it out. And that's what I eventually did. Uh, after many years of staring at the drawings, I didn't get too much out of the text, but the drawings were a big help to me. And I am completely blown away and amazed at the men that put these books together um, so that other people can follow in their footsteps and ensure a dead on accuracy of a piece of handrail that can be duplicated over and over again. So that's what we're gonna be going over today. Um, I, I, before I start, I wanna tell you what I don't like about these books. And I would liken it to, I used to talk to Jim Baldwin, who was great at bringing this topic out in many social media platforms. And I used to tell him, I said, Jim, the thing I don't like about this whole system that's presented in these books, it only brings you to the squared out phase of the handrail. It does not put a profile on it. And I used to tell him, I said, it's like a strip tease act. You get excited about something and you can't complete the thing. It's just a teaser. And then you have to figure out how to put a profile on a rectangular block. And I think you would probably agree it's not, that's not an easy task. So when I first began, I learned the trade out of these books. And I used a three-foot plotter and AutoCAD to do my drawings. I would print out the uh, face molds full scale on the plotter. I would take them out to the shop and spray glue them onto a block of wood and, and begin the cutting process. I don't do that anymore, and I will explain that a little later when we go out in the shop. Right now, my main go-to for uh, cutting out these pieces of handrail is the 3D drawing program. I didn't have that when I started. I was just all flat 2D drawings, which is what the old guys did. They didn't have uh, the advantage of the three-dimensional drawings and they had to rotate planes to get uh, the handrail in the proper pitch and position. Today we have uh, a great tool that has made the job a lot easier and if you look on the screen here I have a piece of handrail right now that's in a block ready to be cut and it makes it so much easier when you're um, cutting like this, it's just going to demonstrate a simulation of what this is going to do. You can see the tool moving back and forth on, on the piece of handrail and cutting it to size. So once we get out in the shop, we'll take a look at um, some of the ways that I started out with and, and what, I, what kind of tools I use today. Okay, is everyone ready? We're going to do the commute out to the shop. You ready? It's a long walk. Are we getting tired yet?
Okay, here we are. I love this space. And I want to talk to you about how and why I built it. Before I had a shop, I was using an old mobile home that was on the property for, I had a few woodworking tools in there and I kept dreaming about building a shop and was never quite able to get it, get it done. And I used to get raw milk from a local farmer. And one day, one evening, his barn burnt down and he had to rebuild it right away. And I went by about a week later and he had these radiuses, radius trusses that he was using to build his building. So I pulled in and stopped and asked him about them. And he told me where, where he got them. And I saw that and I said, that's exactly what I want to use for the shop. So I called him up, got pricing, everything was good. But I just couldn't pull it off at that time. I waited for a year or two. And the next time I called him up, they had had a bad winter and bad ice storms, wind and uh, snow damage on their buildings and their trusses were starting to fail. At that time, the trusses in here that are on four foot centers would have only been an inch and a half by six. And they just weren't engineered strong enough. So they had to revamp their whole line of trusses. And when they did, the price quadrupled and so did the size of the trusses and I didn't think I could afford it. So I stopped by the farmer's place and told him about it. And he said, why don't you build your own? I had never thought about it. He said, you don't have to bend and laminate them. You can use straight lumber and do it. And he gave me a few hints and I went to the library and looked it up and found a few books on it. And I said, that's what I want to do. So I went to my local uh, wood provider, he had a sawmill, and I talked to him about it, and he said, I have a whole pallet of green poplar sitting right here, and it was in the middle of July, I think. He said, if you take that home and sticker it, put it on your concrete pad, uh, and cover it with plastic, he said, that'll be dry enough in about a month to be able to use it. And I said, that's what I want to do. So. Then the process started for actually pouring the concrete in the shop. There were a couple things I did want and didn't want. One was I didn't want a big heater with a blower up in the corner, blowing down hot air in a building that has this much headroom in it. And all the heat rises up and your feet get cold. So I wanted radiant heat in the floor. That was one requirement. So when I poured the concrete, I poured it in four sections on the floor with a space between it. And I had just been on a job where they were using radiant heat and they overbought all the plastic tubing and had all this extra. And that's where I came in. I'd like to buy that. And they gave me a good price on it. Well, the next thing was I don't like having stuff hanging in midair. I didn't want a lot of dust collection pipes and electrical lines running way up in the air. I love this free space here, and I didn't want to clutter it up. So I decided to put the dust collection and the electric in these spaces between the concrete. And that's what I ended up doing, and I, I really love it, it's great. So, um, where are we going next here? I think we wrapped everything up here. I just want to let you know if you want more information or if you'd like to see more of what we do in the shop, you can go to my website, customhandrailshop.com, or my Instagram page, I think it's customhandrails49, and check out some of the other things that, uh, that I've done. And if you really want to dig into this a little bit more, if you go on my, in, uh, my website on the blog tab and scroll all the way down to the bottom, it shows a great process of um, applying paper patterns onto a real tight radius handrail and uh, what that looks like in the process. So, thank you for watching. That concludes the Custom Handrails Part 1, the shop tour. Next up, we're going to take a look at face molds and how to apply them onto a plank 
and how to band saw them out to get it squared out. And so if you want to take a look at that, stay tuned and click on part two. And thanks for watching.